Alright, this is Nick in 3WG again. And this is the third demo of Pigtail. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, changes to the Elecraft UI. Um, Yesu is unchanged, uh, both of those on iPad, and we'll also be looking at the iPhone UI. Uh, so, right now you can see I'm connected to just a regular wireless network. Uh, if we look at the Pigtail, we can see it's blinking red and green. Uh, that's because it doesn't know of any devices that are connected to this ad hoc network. So the Pigtail is running in ad hoc. It's not connected to any type of home Wi-Fi or anything like that. So let's join the network that it's created. Uh, you can see we have the check mark now. And the IP address is set to 169.254.1.2. Uh, it could go DHCP as well, and it'll automatically set an address. It won't be a DHCP address, but it will pick an address that it can talk to the Pigtail with. Now we can see it's no longer blinking red. Oh, one other thing to talk about, this white cable right here that I have going into the uh, the enclosure there, it's a temperature sensor. If we look down in there, that blue thing right there is connected to the voltage regulator. And it's uh, right around 133 Fahrenheit. It's not 140C. So, you know, around 50C or so. Uh, the maximum operating temperature of the Wi-Fi module in there is around 85 Celsius. So, um, ambient temperature in here is around 68 Fahrenheit or so. So, um, I imagine right around 110 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperature you'll start having a problem. But, um, until it's tested, uh, we won't know. So, let's, uh, let's start a PAM log. So I found the pigtail. If we click it now up top, it tells you, if I can zoom in there, it tells you um, what you selected and what type of radio. In case you come back here and uh, you're curious what you had it set to, you'll also notice some new buttons down here, terminal and remote. Remote is for um, if you have your pigtail running at home or you know somewhere else that it's not directly on the same wireless network, you could put an IP address in here. And if you have your home network set up correctly, you know, you're doing all your port forwarding and things like that, you can talk to it, you know, over the internet and control it. Uh, audio is, uh, is a whole other topic. We'll <laughs> discuss that at some uh, future date. Now, uh, the terminal button down here will allow you to um, hit the connect button. will allow you to actually send commands to the Wi-Fi module. So, like, if I do a get everything... Uh, so these are all the uh, the settings of the Wi-Fi module, and if you wanted to, you could actually reconfigure it so you could join it to your home network from this uh, terminal screen here. Uh, so we're connected to the K3 right now. Yeah, I just rebooted the K3. Uh, there's a order of operations for booting these things up, and uh, I didn't follow that. But um, this has been completely changed from the original video, um, just because I, I found an easier way to do it. Uh, but you'll see this uh, plus and minus button here now. That's uh, that'll allow you to change the uh, the VFO, and it's uh, it's accelerating. So. If I can get both of these in there. Um, so, if I hold down the plus button, you'll, if you watch the uh, the K3, you can see it slowly start incrementing and then it speeds up. If I set it to fast, then it'll do uh, kilohertz increments. And it will also speed up. And the same for the minus. Uh, the only other difference in here right now is the addition of the VFO memories. Uh, and those are set from the settings that you saw in the second video. Also, I made it uh, intelligent enough to know if you update the radio, it'll change this uh, this mode display here as well. So if I hit the, the mode button on the radio, we'll see it update up top as well as down at the bottom. Uh, 
Okay, here we have the iPhone simulator. Uh, Hamlog's already running. This is the latest version, 3.81. That was submitted to Apple yesterday. Uh, it has a couple new tools in it, like a, a dupe checker, so it'll it'll look for duplicates in your contact list. And also has a weather tool in there if you want to see what the weather's looking like for the next three or four days. So I've already connected it to Pigtails, so let's add a contact. Uh, so you can see up top, you have this green indicator saying that we're connected to the Pigtail. And frequency and mode here came from the K3. So over here on the K3, um, let me go up to say 20 meters. And you can see that uh, it updates there. Also, um, one of the uh, the changes I made here was that I made it much quicker to gather information from the K3. So it's not really apparent, but uh, it's about 200% faster now. All right, so um, there's a new button down here, Pigtail. If I click on that, you can see that it uh, slides over. This is the same interface you see on the iPad, just sort of rearranged, and uh, and you can go back and forth between the two here. Uh, I can change mode. Uh, you'll notice that it, it jumps back and forth. That's because it's uh, it's querying the radio <coughs> at a certain frequency, and when you change it here, um, it might query the radio before the uh, the command goes to the radio, and then it queries it again and updates the UI. So uh, that's why you see it jump back and forth like that. Uh, but we can switch around. All these these buttons work the same. Also up top, it tells you what your current frequency is. Um, in case you're not looking at the radio, so if I'm spinning the VFO knob over here, uh, we can see it go up and down. Also, the, the plus and minus works. If I hold it down, it starts speeding up. And we can set the frequency in kilohertz. Change CW speed, let's put it at 20, send something, turn on test. Oh, I gotta have it set to CW. That is key. And the memories work. And all these buttons work as well. I haven't, uh, in the first video I mentioned that I wanted these buttons down here to be, you know, on off. I haven't done that yet, but I will. So that's what it's going to look like for iPhone. Let me um, switch it over to Yesu in just one second. Okay, I now have the, uh, the 817 plugged into the pigtail with that CT62 cable. And if I add a contact, oh, this came from the 817, so if I switch around bands, say 15 meters, and change the mode, CW. Same pigtail button, the UI looks different. <coughs> Again, just because Yesu doesn't have as rich a command set as Elecraft. Uh, same frequency readout up top setting the frequency and then lock split and PTT all work the same so that's what the iPhone UI will look like so that's it for now um, my enclosures are uh, are being silk screened as we speak and hopefully I'll have them within a week or so and once I have them, I'll uh, I'll be pushing an update to uh, to Apple for version 4.0. The uh, I also have an iCom cable on the way, so I should be able to get iCom in there before version 4.0 go goes out. I don't have a Kenwood radio though, so that one might have to wait. Um, I don't want to uh, just try to do it from the manuals. I have to test it with a real radio, otherwise uh, I'll be pushing bad code. So. Um, Kenwood might not be in the first release, but uh, I'm definitely shooting for Elecraft, Yesu, and ICOM. And uh, if Kenwood's not in there, I'll definitely make sure that uh, anyone looking at the product on the website is well aware uh, until it is in there. Alright, thanks. Uh, let me know what you think.